In the last few decades, or I guess in the last few years, there have been some major advances when it comes to observatories and telescopes. With several observatories around the planet getting major updates, increasing their capabilities when it comes to watching the night skies. But when it comes to the best types of observation available to us, it's always been about space telescopes. Like the iconic Hubble telescope you see right here, or the more recently launched James Webb telescope that is still cooling down and is still getting ready for its first light, as of the making of this video. But space telescopes always had this one major limitation size. It's always been difficult to make a larger and larger telescope in order to place it into orbit. And so even though the Hubble's mirror is about 2.4 meters across, the only way the scientists figure out how to make a 6.5 meter for the James Webb Space Telescope was to literally turn it into a kind of an origami, an unfolding telescope that would become larger when it's in space. Which is of course why this mission was so complicated and why so many things could have gone wrong. But so far, everything seems to be going as planned. Nevertheless, with telescopes, it's really always about the size of the primary mirror. And so figuring out how to make an even larger mirror and how to then try to place it into a location where the telescope can observe the night skies has always been the major priority for modern scientists. But with the James Webb telescope, we might have reached an official limit. Or did we? Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about the very interesting experiment currently going on on the International Space Station that has a potential to create a way for us to create even larger mirrors in space and to then observe even things like distant exoplanets. Because the only way for us to ever see a distant planet directly is to actually create a large enough mirror somewhere in outer space with all of this involving a somewhat intriguing and extremely interesting and original technology using what's known as a liquid mirror. A telescopic mirror made entirely out of a liquid solidified in space, employing several really interesting phenomena that only happen in zero gravity. But I guess the question is, why? Why not just do this the hard way like we always did with telescopes? Well, the thing is, when it comes to these really large mirrors, the larger the mirror, the more complex and more expensive the manufacturing process. With mirrors of extremely large size, more than 5 meters across, costing millions and millions in production and becoming more and more difficult to produce as the size increases. As a matter of fact, this is one of the main reasons why usually it's more beneficial and much cheaper to actually make a telescope out of multiple mirrors. Which is actually why some of the largest planned telescopes are going to be made this way. They're going to be made out of smaller 2.4 to 2.5 meters, which are much easier and much cheaper to produce. With the telescope that you see right here, known as Grand Telescopio Canarius, currently being the record holder for the largest single mirror at 10.5 meters across. And so I guess one way of maybe making something bigger in space is just the same what they did with James Webb Telescope, making a compound telescope out of multiple mirrors. But that would require multiple launches and would also end up really quickly in terms of the cost. And so for example, the extremely large telescope planned in Chile, made out of more than 100 different mirrors, would in theory require more than 100 launches. And so that's not really a practical way of doing this when it comes to space telescopes. On top of this, every single one of these mirrors is still kind of difficult to produce and still requires a lot of extra steps and a lot of extra procedures in order to create an almost perfect both in shape and reflectivity mirror. And so could we maybe do this some other way? Can we actually use the natural laws of physics along with some creativity to create something out of, for example, a fluid, a liquid? Well, liquid telescopes are already a reality. They've existed for many, many years, more than 100 years as a matter of fact. And these so-called liquid mirror telescopes have usually been made out of liquid metals. The metal that's liquid at room temperatures, although some other metals have also been used before, such as, for example, alloys of gallium. And the concept of liquid metal mirrors was actually explored by the iconic Isaac Newton, who even did all of the math and calculations behind it, but was never able to physically produce an actual telescope. That record goes to a much less known Henry Skay of New Zealand, who made a first working lab with the first liquid mirror telescope back in 1872 over 150 years ago. And the thing about these telescopes is that they're actually really easy to produce and are relatively cheap as well. They don't require much in terms of the production costs. 
and they rely on a very simple principle of how liquids behave when they're rotated. In this case, by having a very thin layer of liquid and by spinning the location where this liquid is along the vertical axis, depending on the speed of the rotation, the liquid will then start assuming a parabolic shape perfect for a typical telescopic mirror. And if you create a container that's already slightly parabolic, it can actually reduce the amount of liquid needed and dramatically reduce the cost as well. But more importantly, none of this requires any kind of grounding or polishing or any other processes that are usually required for major telescopes when mirrors are produced. Processes that become extremely expensive as the mirror grows in size. With this image right here, taken by Paul Hickson of University of British Columbia, being the biggest such telescopic mirror ever produced, over 6 meters across. Although, as of making of this video, this has now been stopped as a project, mostly because of the weather problems in Vancouver, there's quite a lot of rain, and so it's always been difficult to use this telescope for observations. But there's another problem with these telescopes, and why they're not actually used more often. They have to be in a completely flat environment, and cannot be tilted or shifted in any way. Because without a perfectly leveled environment, they're not going to create the necessary parabolic shape. These types of telescopes are normally known as the zenith telescope. So essentially telescopes that have to be always leveled and cannot be shifted by much. And so because of this, using this on Earth, because of the gravity, is always a challenge. And these telescopes would also have very limited amount of observations they can usually do. But in the past, scientists have also proposed putting these into outer space. And specifically by having a liquid telescope with just a little bit of gravity to assume the shape in a certain direction would actually make a lot of sense as well and would allow for a much larger production in terms of size. Although at least for now all of this has been theoretical and has never really been tried before. And on top of this, mercury only stays liquid in room temperatures. If you were to place it in the temperatures of outer space, it would solidify and become useless. So despite the originality of this idea, for now at least it has very limited use. But because of the brilliancy of using liquids for telescopes, there's always been this other proposition. A proposition that has now become an official mission, including an actual experiment conducted with NASA's collaboration. This is known as FOOT, Fluidic Telescope Experiment. And the experiment itself is once again somewhat interesting and somewhat brilliant. It doesn't use any liquid mercury, it doesn't use any unusual liquids or unusual materials, and for the most part relies on the ideas of liquids forming a perfectly spherical shape when placed in zero g, with the eventual goal being a production of a liquid mirror in space 10 to maybe even 100 times bigger than anything we've ever been able to produce. But also, more importantly, removing all of the extra steps of grinding and polishing the mirrors as well. And all of this, of course, relying on the unusual effects produced by liquids in space, and there are so many different explorations of liquids in space that have already been done by both ESA and NASA, with the scientists discovering that the liquids tend to behave in a very similar way and tend to form very specific structures if placed in certain conditions, and in some cases by mixing liquids of different densities or by mixing certain materials together, it becomes possible to form certain shapes on the inside. So for example, it becomes possible to start forming actual parabolic lenses inside a typical water bubble, or I guess water shape, whatever you want to call it, with all this being a relatively cheap and more importantly, relatively quick process. It wouldn't take long to produce an almost perfect parabolic mirror and produce all of this by using a very similar technique to what you see right here from the experiments conducted on top of the International Space Station. And the team behind the study has already conducted several experiments on top of these so-called reduced gravity aircraft that usually produce zero-g conditions for just a few seconds. The aircraft that follow this curve you see right here in order to create zero gravity for roughly around 20 seconds at a time. In this case, using various synthetic oils of various viscosities in order to determine which would work the best. And by combining various oils on the inside, for those 20 seconds, they were able to create perfectly shaped lenses, or perfectly shaped mirrors, with all of this falling apart once the gravity returned. But this was enough to convince NASA to try this even more, and this time take it to the International Space Station, because it looks like the scientists behind the study are onto something after all.
with all this being one of the scientific missions being taken to the ISS by the first ever private mission known as Axiom-1, the mission launched by SpaceX on 8th of April 2022. You can learn a little bit more about X-1 mission investigations in the link in the description below, but this particular experiment is one of them, and it's going to represent an extremely important attempt of seeing if this technology really works in actual zero-g. In this case, the lens is going to be created from various liquid polymers, which are then going to be hardened using temperature and ultraviolet light, which is actually exactly how it's usually done in a typical nail salon when the artificial nails are hardened using the UV light. And because all of this is going to be a relatively simple process, the final product will then be examined here on Earth to see if the mirror is indeed as perfect as the scientists are hoping to make it. And so once this is done and once it's actually finished, there might be a chance for the scientists to figure out how to make this into an actual very large mirror that could then be placed in outer space by using a very similar technology, which could then maybe lead us to a completely new step in creating various telescopes, a new revolution in space-based manufacturing and a new way for us to make things in space thus making various space stations, including the future space stations that are planned right now, actually useful for the future of manufacturing. But I guess for now that's kind of all we have. It's a very interesting proposition, it's a very interesting experiment, and it's a pretty interesting idea to begin with. But we don't really know if it's going to work yet, and we don't really know if it's going to lead to anything in the future. Once we do, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.